does hunting fit in the permaculture ethic? I'm Justin Hitt from Prosperity Homestead. We're actually out here on an intersection and I'm checking deer cameras. I actually have this interesting little stealth cam. Uh, actually, this product's pretty good. There'll be a link in the description below. This disc is actually full. I see it has 14.8 gigabytes out of 14.8 gigabytes. And this old Browning camera works really well, but it doesn't hold a charge long. So I either have to put new batteries in it every visit or I use this battery pack. Now being in the woods, it's hard to get a decent amount of sun, except if you have these trails. As you can see, these trail systems, the way they go, um, gives me a little bit of light, but not quite enough light for solar. And what we set up this camera here for is to give me kind of a, uh, a, a, how does this intersection work out? And I had it up the way over here a bit, but it was too high. But this time around, we've got 64 videos on it. And I can make sure, I use this little device, this stealth cam device, by the way, to check the video. Now, again, what does hunting have to do with permaculture? Why would I be monitoring animal activity? Well, part of the survey is to see what kind of animals are coming through here. And of those animals that come through here, what types are they? I don't know how well this is gonna work out, but ultimately what I'm looking for is deer, bear. I'm looking for kind of a land survey. I know I noticed there's a bunch of dogs that run back here. Now I'm not seeing this very well on the camera. Let me just explain it to you. Basically setting up the trail cameras protects the property from unlawful hunters. One of the things about the permaculture ethic is it's earth, you know, earth care, people care. I am concerned about the safety of individuals back on this piece of property. I'm also concerned about the uh, well-being of the animals on this property. And if I don't know what kind of animals are back here, um, which is difficult when the woods is as thick as they were, then I am not clear on what next step there is in the habitat. And by the way, you'll notice the undergrowth in the woods is a little bit thicker than it is on the trails because the trails are layered in mulch. Uh, you know, the forest mulcher came through here, cut down the trees, shredded them up, and basically layered the trails. But back to my point, does hunting work in permaculture? Let's say you buy a piece of property, agricultural land, empty land. You're probably not gonna do anything with it for three to five years. First thing I recommend is you get access to the property. So I did that with the trail system and you'll see I spray painted on trees and, and uh, you know, got ribbons up and stuff and that seems a little messy, but I wanna make it clear that this is active land. I have no hunt purple on quite a few trees. I'm using green this time around for the sections of trees that are gonna be forest mulched. I keep trees that are larger than four inches. So you can see along the edge of this path, there's some, some longer straight pines that are later gonna be used for some timber framing. Even though they're small, we're making some Adirondack shelters. But as shelters set up on the property, as there are obvious campsites, as there are hiking trails, as there are biking trails, it will attract people. You know, a four, somebody on a four-wheeler would have a hell of a good time back here uh, all over the property. You can go the whole perimeter of the property. You can go cross-section on the property. But animals don't like people. And I need to know whether there are animals on the property like deer, squirrel, fox, bears, whatever, before there are too many people on the property that would scare those animals off. I also want to know as the seasons change, what are we looking at as far as rainfall? What are we looking at as, at as far as soil conditions? So right here, you can see there's a slight slope and some of the mulch is washed off. I also did an inventory of nuts. You'll see a lot of acorns down here. Um, see up there, it's a little bit higher, but the leaves have covered everything. I can feel a nice breeze here. All these things go down into a journal so that not only do I have a mapping of the different characteristics of the land, but I start managing it as a zone five, as that zone furthest from your house. I'm managing it for natural habitat, natural meats so and grazing. So basically the deer are my livestock, but they're not bound to this property. I'm uh, managing it for forage goods. So there are a couple areas that I marked that have mushrooms that come up. There, I found turkey tail today, for example. Oh, and you can see examples. See the orange uh, is where the path was marked on one side. 
and the green is where the uh, opening is going to be open up. We're basically going to open this area of woods up here um, to make a larger campsite, to set up a pavilion, and to possibly have a home site in the future. In order to get a well dug, you need a 21 foot wide path. So we want to get our home site uh, kind of cleared out a little bit. But then again, while this is happening, the open paths let me get the cameras, the observation, even just sitting out here meditating and relaxing and looking to see, you know, what is it that we're going to see out here? Um, those types of things go into a journal. It helps me with the pro property design. It slows down the design so that you're not jumping in too far. So for example, this particular home site looks great on a satellite map, um, but you can see the front, this is the middle line. It, it's a contour line across the middle of the property. Um, the acre and a half forward is more level than the acre and a half in the back, which has a ditch running down the bottom of it. So if this was gonna be a home site, I would probably put the house on the front part but not at the top of the hill. Problem is, property faces north-south, so if I don't put the property at the top of the hill, I lose the southern solar aspect. So by looking at the videos, by observing the land through hikes, by enjoying the land for, for weekend, week-long campouts, I'm able to start getting a better idea of what is going on out here. So that was my low battery warning. I've been out here for a little bit hiking. I've probably done a couple miles enjoying myself. I got one last camera to check. But my point is permaculture and hunting go good together because what we're, what we're doing is we're cultivating nature. We're cultivating the environment, making it a better, more livable habitat that makes for healthier animals. I may never hunt on this land. I don't currently go hunting regularly. I'm more of a fishing kind of guy. Um, I haven't processed the deer before. I'm only learning now how to process small animals. I will be running goats back here. So if there are good deer habitat, that gives me an idea how much food's available uh, for the goat. But ultimately, uh, again, permaculture is earth care. Care for the earth. The earth feeds the bounty of the earth, which is the animals, by cutting paths, thinning areas out, by interacting with the land in a recreational aspect, by observing the land through uh, appropriate technology or personal experience, I'm developing a profile for this particular piece of land. Now, I do this for client land as well. Uh, I don't necessarily go camp on client's land, but I, I do go hike it, walk it, map it, use the satellites, uh, take photographs, take videos. Um, all that, is, again, is building up a library so that you can get the most from the land without harming the ecology, without damaging the natural environment, without harming what is naturally there. And in fact, doing things that facilitate the regeneration of that land. At one time, this land was just scrub. It is actually still kind of scrub, but um, it was just grazing farmland. It was not in good use. It had sat idle for a few years. It got timbered by you know, a rip and dump uh, timbering company. We're going to get it to its very best state. We're going to work with nature. We're going to observe nature. We're going to amplify the good things about the property. We're going to correct the issues like erosion um, and other things in the property. We're going to invest in the land and the land will pay dividends for my lifetime, my children's lifetime, and their grandchildren. I'm Justin Hitt with Prosperity Homestead. If you have questions about what I've covered here, visit www.prosperityhomestead.org. Go to the contact page, ask your questions, and you would, would you guess? I got a bunch of special reports, resources, tip sheets, and if you ask a question and I've got a resource for you, I'll be more than happy to send it over to you because together we can improve on... You're not going to improve on nature so much, but we can get out of its way and let nature do what nature does and have a more vibrant and high value uh, ecosystem. Thanks for watching.